Hi kids, this is Lindsay again. Uh, happy Monday. Um, we're going to start with our world today. Uh, maybe today, if I have time, we'll look at Grammar Friends, but probably tomorrow. Today, I want to look at the Our World pages we haven't looked at yet. So take out your Our World and look at page 159. Also, before we start, <clears throat> I want to tell you about a new game I want to play. You know, it's not really a game. You know, Lindsay's games are never fun. But I can see how long some of you are watching videos on YouTube. So I could see maybe uh, this kid only watched it for five minutes and this kid only watched it for 15 minutes. So I want you to watch the video all the way and finish it. It's only 30 minutes. You need to watch and pay attention. Now, what's the game? Well, today and tomorrow and forever, when I make a video, I will ask some questions in the video. And let's say I say in Teacher Emily's class, Austin, please answer this question. And Austin can go to the comments for the video and write the answer. So I know that Austin is paying attention and Austin has seen all the video. Now, if I call Lucas and Lucas didn't watch the video, he doesn't know he needs to write the questions answer in the comments. So I will know that Lucas is not, or whoever, is not watching the video. So today, I will say, oh, uh, Austin in Teacher Emily's class. Or I will say, uh, Patty in Teacher, uh, what's her name, uh, Joyce's class. And that kid has to write the answer to my question in the comments on this video so we can all see it and we'll see who wasn't paying attention to the video all right it's not just turning the video and watching you have to, and not watching not paying attention you have to pay attention because i'm going to ask questions now and some of you not everyone maybe only four or five kids every day i'll ask you to write the answers in the comments to the video. Good. Okay, page 159. Before I start, I want you to look at the picture on page 159. I know it's a strange picture. It's yellow and red, right? Well, I'll tell you why. They are using a special camera that can see heat. It will make the heat look red. If it's not very hot, it looks yellow. If it's less hot, it will be green, and cold will be a little blue, right? So if you look at these kids riding a bicycle, riding bicycles, their legs and arms are hot because they're exercising. They're hotter than the other parts of their body. See, their stomachs are not very hot, so it's a little yellow. But if you look at maybe their back, it's hotter because they are exercising and sweating. So that's what that picture is. I just wanted you to, to understand why it's yellow and red and green like that. All right, let's read the title for this, for this page, page 159. Think creatively and critically. Think creatively and critically. If you think creatively, that means you try to have new ideas try to think of things other people didn't think about. Some of the kids in your class, they're very funny because they think creatively very fast. Maybe they're not the best kid in math. Maybe they're not the best kid in science or English. But if they can make a joke very fast, then they can think creatively. Their brain is working very fast so they can think of funny things. So they're very creative. And they think creatively. But if a kid thinks critically, what's that mean? Critically means, maybe I tell you an idea. And you think, no, Lindsay, that's not going to work because blah, blah, blah. You try to find why it's a good idea or why it's a bad idea. 
if I tell you we are going to walk to the moon and you say, yeah, let's go. You're not thinking critically. You're just following me. Maybe you're following other people. Maybe you read the newspaper or watch the television and somebody on there tells you, we're going to walk to the moon. Well, I hope you think critically because if you think you can walk to the moon, you're going to have a problem. You don't just trust ideas. You have to think critically. Can we walk to the moon? Is it very far? Is there any air? Where's the road? Are you crazy? <laughs> so critically means you think about somebody's idea. Don't just believe everything somebody tells you. If I tell you the sky is purple and you think the sky is blue, well, do you believe me or do you believe your own eyes? You have to think critically. So don't just listen to other people. If you want to find out the truth, you have to think critically. All right, so think creatively and critically. Let's read it. Think, pair, share. Think means, of course, you think about the idea. Pair means you work with other people. And share means you share ideas. So let's read it. Why is it important to understand how and why things work? Well, if you don't do that, you will never understand your world. You are one person in your world, and the world is a big place. We have cars and bicycles and televisions. And if you never ask questions, you will never understand. And it says, why is it important to understand how and why things work? Well, maybe you need to fix something. Maybe you need to use something. Maybe it will be important in your life. And if you want to think critically, you have to think for yourself. So you need to learn how things work. Number two, how can we learn more about how and why things work? Well, the best way is to ask questions. Read science books. If you walk around your house and you see something, ask why. Why does this happen? How does this work? Do you know how a bicycle works? Do you know how a camera works? If you're interested in something, you should ask why. So how can we learn more about how and why things work? Well, the easiest way is to ask questions. You can read books, but it's important to ask. And if you can't find the answer, you need to find a book or a library, right? All right, think of three examples of things you would like to understand better. There are lots of things around us we don't understand. Maybe we don't understand how televisions work. Maybe you don't understand how radios work. You're not in first grade. You are old enough to understand the science. I know it may be not, may be not very easy, but you can read a lot about that. If you're interested in sports, learn about the history of sports. Sports have science too. The right way to kick a ball, the right way to hit the ball, the right way to catch and run. So if you want to understand things better, find something around you that you don't understand, maybe something you're interested in. If you do that, you will understand your world. At the bottom, when something unexpected or unusual happens, I am always curious to find out why. And this man, he's a very important scientist. And his advice is to find out why. If something around you breaks, or if something around you is a problem, why? You know, recently we lost some power in Taipei, and some people didn't have electricity. Why? It's not easy to understand, but you can read the newspaper, you can read books, you can ask why. And maybe your parents can help you understand too. Ask your science teacher. All right, we're going to jump to page 160. On 160, this kid is making something and it's called a thaumatrope. A thaumatrope turns very fast. And when it turns very fast, it's a little bit like a movie theater. 
And when you make a movie and you turn it very fast, your eye thinks it is moving. Well, let's read. Cut out. Two circles of cardstock paper are cardboard. They just mean the paper has to be hard. It can be not, it cannot be the white paper like your homework paper. It has to be like a hard piece of paper. Make them the same size. So you need two pieces the same size. Draw an object, person, or animal in the middle of one circle. And you can see the boy drew a fish, right? Draw a home for the object, person, or animal on the other circle. Object just means thing. So this fish's home is the fish bowl. Now, the fish is on one side and the fish bowl is on the other. Then number four, stick or glue the two circles together. The picture on the back should be upside down because you're going to turn that picture so it needs to be upside down. You can see the fish is looking one way and the bowl is the other way. Make holes on each side. Attach string or a rubber band. I'll tell you this works better if you use two rubber bands. Make a hole in the card, put the rubber band in, and then pull it around. Okay, a little bit like you're making a mask, but we're not making a mask. Spin the circles fast and watch the two pictures turn into one. Why do you think this happens? Well, of course, the answer is magic. No, I'm joking. It's not magic. Why does this happen? Well, it doesn't really happen. It just looks like it happens. Why do you think this happens? Well, it's not magic. Think critically. The pictures are going fast and your eyes think it sees that fish inside the bowl, but it's not really there. You never drew the fish inside the bowl, but it looks like it. Your eyes and your brain Take the two pictures and put them together. Okay, on the right. Now I can identify how we use force to move. We talked about we use more force to push and to pull. That's how we move in our world. We push and we pull. And we use force to push and pull. Number two, now I can use the more to describe cause and effect. Cause and effect in English, they're very important. The more you run, the stronger you are. The more you study, the better your grade. We've practiced that. Well, I'll tell you what, right now, let's ask some questions. In teacher Joyce's class, let's ask Aline. Aline's a smart girl. I'm sure she's listening. Let's ask her the question. I want her in the comments on this video to finish the sentence. The harder you work, the, the harder you work, the cha-cha-cha. Aline, write the answer there. And let's do another one in teacher Emily's class. Let's ask, let me think, who can we ask? Let's ask, Yolanda. Yolanda in Teacher Emily's class, answer this question. Write it in the comments on the video. Finish this one. <clears throat> the more you study, and then how do you finish the sentence? The more you study, cha-cha-cha. So you finish the whole sentence. Let's do another one in Teacher Joyce's class. Mm, who can do it? In Teacher Joyce's class, let's do Ken. Ken, finish this sentence. <clears throat> the more... Oh, I know a good one. The more you play in class. So somebody's playing in class. The more you play in class, that's the cause. What's the result? play in class, and what's the result? The more you play in class. So Ken, you write the answer there in the comments. The more you play in class, 
and what's the result? In Teacher Emily's class, let's ask Dino. I want to see if Dino is watching my videos. Dino, answer this question. The more you eat, and then what's the result? The more you eat is the cause, and then you write the effect. So Dino, write the answer in the comments. I'll be waiting for you. All right, then let's read on page 161. I can understand and make definitions. The definitions you need to be able to make are especially about this vocabulary. For example, if I ask you what is gravity, you need to tell me um, when the force that pulls you toward the earth, that's gravity. And what is friction? When you rub two things together, that is friction. So you should be able to make and understand definitions. All right, for number the next one, now I can write about cause and effect. Well, I hope you can. Cause and effect means if you do this, this happens. Cause and effect. All right, we're gonna turn the page. This is review. Now, I'll do a little bit of the review today and we'll try to do some more next time. Um, right now, take out 164 and let's read that story. I want to read Leonardo da Vinci and we'll do the review later, not right now. Let's do Leonardo da Vinci and the review I want to do is page 163. It's a little difficult to do 162, but we can do 163 later. So look at page 164, Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci. All right, we're gonna read this story and I'll ask some questions about it too. The greatest inventor in history. And they have a question mark because they're saying, is he the greatest inventor in history? So let's say the name again, Leonardo. Da Vinci, Leonardo da Vinci, that's his name, Leonardo da Vinci, the greatest inventor in history. All right. It is often told how Leonardo da Vinci used to go to his local market to buy birds in cages. Others bought the birds to kill and eat them or keep them as pets. But Leonardo, to everyone's surprise, bought the birds to let them go. The book doesn't say let them go, it says release them. Release them means let them go. Release from their cages and let them fly away. Let me read it again. But Leonardo, to everyone's surprise, bought the birds to release them from their cages and let them fly away. He wasn't really trying to be nice, although maybe he felt bad for the birds. Um, but he had other reasons for doing this. All right, let's read. Leonardo's kindness to animals was well known. He was a vegetarian. So that means he doesn't, he didn't eat meat. So at that time, there were not many vegetarians in Italy. He lived in Italy. And Leonardo's kindness to animals was well known. He was a vegetarian. But more than this, he was fascinated by the flight of birds. More than this, he was fascinated that means he was very interested in the flight of birds. Before letting the birds go, actually, before releasing the birds, he studied their wing shape, structure, and movement. So he studied the birds very carefully, just so he could let the birds fly away and watch what they did. He made detailed drawings of birds' wings, 
Most of all, he had a dream to design a machine that would let humans, human beings, fly like birds. So he was studying these birds so he could invent a machine. He was studying these birds so he could invent a flying machine. So there's a question. Cinderella, why was he studying those birds? Why was he studying those birds? Cinderella, in Teacher Emily's class, give me the answer. Why was he studying those birds? And I told everybody the answer. He wanted to build a flying machine. So let's see if Cinderella was listening and she can write the answer in the comments section. Next, one of Leonardo's designs for a flying machine showed an enormous pair of wings joined to a wooden frame. Enormous, do you remember the word? Enormous just means really super big, huge, enormous wings, pair of wings joined to a wooden frame. According to the drawings, the brave pilot would be inside the frame and move the wings up and down. Now, you can imagine why the book says brave. At that time, nobody could fly. And anybody who got in this machine, well, they have to be very brave because they could die. Leonardo also drew a design for a glider. Now, a glider looks like an airplane, but the wings don't move. The wings, it doesn't have a motor. The glider just flies like a paper airplane. A paper airplane is a kind of glider. Leonardo also drew a design for a glider. This was much simpler and people have recently built and successfully flown it with one small change to the original design. Other flight-related designs by Leonardo were for a helicopter and a parachute. You know, Leonardo lived 500 years ago and he had a lot of ideas. He was thinking creatively and he wanted to make things that were new. When he thought creatively, he said, wow, I want to make a parachute. Maybe if a man falls very far, the parachute will make him slow down so he doesn't get hurt. But he wasn't just thinking creatively, he was also thinking critically. He had to be smart enough to know the parachute has to be very big. If it's too small, it won't be able to carry a person. When he thought of an idea, let's see, his other idea was a helicopter. He knew he needed to turn the wings because it will make the helicopter go up and down. But the problem was they didn't have engines. So Leonardo never built his helicopter. He knew he didn't have enough power and the wings were not big enough to make the helicopter go up and down. He had a good idea. He was being very creative. He was thinking creatively, but he also thought critically. He knew if a pilot took his helicopter, it would never fly. And he didn't want to hurt anybody. So he invented the glider, but he didn't tell everybody, oh, go try to jump off a mountain. You have to think critically. It could be dangerous, right? All right. Leonardo was so many things. Artist, musician, architect. Architects design houses. Engineer. Engineers build bridges. Scientist and inventor. Today, he is usually best known for his art including two of the most famous paintings in the world, Mona Lisa and The Last Supper. If you look at the book, they write Mona Lisa, it's a little sideways because those are the names of famous paintings. So you've probably heard of Mona Lisa. 
It's a very famous painting of a woman. Now, it's amazing. He was not only an inventor, not only an artist, but he also wrote songs. So Leonardo really worked hard to be creative and make new things. However, centuries ahead of his time, he imagined and designed a huge range of inventions. Why do, the, why do we say he was ahead of his time? Well, he didn't have electricity and he didn't have engines and it was too hard for him to build that. He lived 500 years ago, but if he lived today and he had electricity and engines and the internet, wow, imagine what he could invent. If he worked hard and he thought creatively and he thought critically, wow, imagine what he could invent. 500 years ago, he was already amazing. So, surely, that means it must be, he must count as one of the greatest inventors ever. And you see they have a question mark there because it's hard to say who's the most creative, who's the most amazing, who's the greatest inventor ever. But this writer believes he was very amazing. He invented a lot of things because he thought creatively and he thought critically. So if you look at the bottom of the page, there's a line talking about his life. When he was born in 1452, all the way until he died, he did so many interesting things with his life. In the middle, you will see 1503, that's when he starts to paint the Mona Lisa. But he designed many things, gliders, helicopters, parachutes, so many amazing things. Let's read a little bit about his life. In 1467, young Leonardo goes to Florence, that's a city, to study with artists, Andrea de Boricocci. Now, he went, when he was very young, to study with very famous artists, because when he was young, people already knew he was very talented. So let's look at when he gets older, He's in 1503, he's already 50 years old, and he studies flight, the human body, and rocks and plants. He never gets bored. All his life, he was interested in many different things. And if he didn't understand something, he asked how, why? Why does a bird fly? Why does this happen? That's why he was able to invent many, many things because he asked why. It's very important. All right, we don't have time today, but in the next lesson, we will write the answers to page 165. At the top, let's read it, let's go. 1519, 1519 was a year, and that was 522, 23 years ago. Flying, helicopter, you remember what a helicopter is? Paintings and released. And remember I told you released means let go. All right, we'll stop there for today and we'll work on the video again next time. Bye kids.